Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the weekly Outside Views report on German politics. The so-called traffic light coalition in Berlin is expected to adopt the controversial electoral law reform on Friday in the Bundestag with its own majority. When voting in the parliamentary groups on Tuesday afternoon, the members of the Greens and the Liberals agreed unanimously and those of the Social Democrats with an overwhelming majority. This was announced by the parliamentary group leaders Rolf Mützenich from the SPD, Britta Hasselmann from the Greens and Christian Dürr from the FDP. They described the reform which will reduce the Bundestag from 736 MPs to 630 as fair and constitutional. At the same time, they appealed to the union which strictly rejects the projects and feels disadvantaged to agree to the reform after all. Union faction leader Friedrich Merz is threatening the traffic light coalition with a review by the federal constitutional course because of its planned electoral law reform. If there is a majority in the Bundestag for the changed plans, in my view a constitutional review is indeed necessary, said Merz, who is also party leader of the CDU, on Tuesday before a meeting of the union faction in Berlin. He will propose rejecting the plans at the vote scheduled for Friday. In the event of a corresponding decision in the Bundestag, the union faction will make a decision on a possible lawsuit in the next week of the um, yeah that they will meet at the end of March, as Merz announced. And according to the traffic light plans, MPs who are directly elected in their constituencies would only be counted and would have to have their seats if they have a second vote coverage. And this will lead to a large number of directly elected MPs no longer moving into the Bundestag. And this is a suffrage of the cheated voter and aimed primarily at the CSU. According to the traffic light plans, a party running for election in one federal state must clear the 5% hurdle throughout Germany, otherwise all constituency mandates would be lost. And this would be a blatant violation of the principle of democracy. CSU regional group leader Alexander Dobrindt has warned against a standstill because of the budget dispute in the federal government and he has called on Chancellor Olaf Scholz to act. Germany is threatened with a budget blockade, said Dobrindt on Tuesday in Berlin before a meeting of the union faction. The finance minister of the traffic light coalition calls on his coalition partners to recognize the financial realities. They obviously don't do that, said Dobrindt, referring to Federal Finance Minister Christian Lindner from the Liberals. Union faction leader Friedrich Merz criticized the fact that Lindner did not present the key figures for the budget as planned this Wednesday. Measured against economic output, citizens and companies in Germany have never paid as many taxes and social security contributions as recently. The rate is at an all-time high, according to finance ministry officials on Tuesday. Reference is made to the latest available figures from 2021. According to ministry figures, the tax ratio that, was, uh, that year was 42.4% of gross domestic product. In 2010, it was only 38.6%. And in 1960, it was 33.4. The ministry concludes that calls for higher tax burdens are currently out of place. The Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution currently sees no sufficient evidence to assess the climate group last generation as extremist. That was said by their president Thomas Haldenwang to the editorial network Germany on Wednesday. The fact that the group sometimes acts criminally does not change that. Haldenwang emphasized the Office for the Protection of the Constitution takes a close look every day at how the situation is developing. The group, which was founded at the end of 2021, blocked motorways access for the first time on January 24th last year. Thereafter, with interruptions, such blockades followed almost daily as well as protests in museums, stadiums, at all pipelines and airports. Among other things, the activists are calling for a general move away from fossil fuels such as oil, gas and coal. Many politicians had criticized the group's actions. For example, Federal Finance Minister Christian Lindner called the group's actions extremely 
dangerous. Before the Prime Minister's conference today, North Rhine-Westphalia's Prime Minister Hendrik Wüst urged Chancellor Olaf Scholz to provide rapid financial support on the issue of refugees. The Chancellor must finally live up to his responsibility and make fa financing the refugee costs a, a top priority, as Wüst said uh, in an interview with the Rheinische Post. Both the federal states and the municipalities were reaching their limits in view of the increasing number of refugees. We have to be able to do justice to the people who are fleeing to us from the war, said Wüst. Instead of keeping their promise and providing financial support to the federal states, the federal government seems to believe that the problem can simply be set out and they don't do anything. The deliberations of the country heads on or the state heads on Thursday in Berlin will deal, among other things, with the distribution of refugees and financing for accommodation. Wüst is deputy chairman of the Prime Minister's Conference. After the Education Summit for Stronger Cooperation between the federal, state and local governments, Bavaria insists on independence. Educational centralism will not exist with us, that does not suit Germany, said the Bavarian Minister of Science, Markus Blume, to the German press agency. Education is indeed the responsibility of the federal states. A joint approach in this field is therefore often difficult. Federal Education Minister Bettina Stark-Watzinger called for more cooperation at the Education Summit in Berlin on Tuesday and announced the establishment of a Team Education Task Force. The FDP politician wants to get the federal, state, local authorities and export experts on board. For around three and a half million students and technical school students, the months of waiting for the energy price flat rate should soon be over. From yesterday onwards, everyone could apply for the one-off payment of 200 euros, said Federal Education Minister Bettina Stark-Watzinger to the German press agency. All eligible persons can now submit their application on the einmalgeld200.de platform set up by the federal and state governments for this purpose. The processing of the applications and the payment will take place very quickly thanks to the automated process said the liberal politician. The money is intended as a relief for the sharp rise in energy prices. The application platform had been tested in a pilot project with several universities in the past few weeks. According to the ministry, more than 3.5 million euros have been paid to around 18,000 applicants. Around 1.5 million Berlin households are to be protected from excessive rent increases in the coming years. On Tuesday, the Senate extended a regulation according to which the rents in existing contracts may be increased by a maximum of 15% within three years, up to the local comparative rent. According to the Senate administration, the so-called capping limit has been in effect since 2018 and would have expired this year. The extension applies for a further five years until 2028. The Berlin Senate is using an option for the tenant protection measure that the federal government, which is actually responsible for rent law, has granted to the federal states. They can identify areas with what is known as a tight housing market where the cap applies. Additional protective mechanisms are in place for around 350,000 tenants of municipal apartments in Berlin. A moratorium will apply to them until the end of this year, which will largely prevent rent increases. With a view to the discussion about Ukraine's ammunition requirements in the fight against Russia, the German armaments group Rheinmetall is once again making the European governments responsible. I need orders. I don't produce anything without orders said CEO Armin Pappberger in an interview with the Bloomberg News Agency. A lack of ammunition will not be due to the industry. And according to Pappberger, Rheinmetall will only produce ammunition at around two-thirds of its capacity this year 
due to the sluggish completion of orders. In addition, the amount of ammunition that Ukraine has recently asked the Union, uh, European Union for would be difficult to produce, according to the manager. For this, the capacity in Europe would have to be doubled again. The Federal Administrative Court has confirmed the trusteeship of two German subsidiaries of the Russian oil company Rosneft. The order by the Federal Ministry of Economics was lawful, as the court in Leipzig ruled on Tuesday. Last September, the federal government effectively took over control of Rosneft Germany and RN Refining and Marketing with the Trust Administration. The companies are majority owners of the important PCK refinery in Schwedt and Brandenburg. Rosneft had sued the trusteeship. The Federal Administrative Court held oral arguments for four days and extensively interviewed witnesses about the situation at the German Rosneft subsidiaries last year. The federal government had justified the trusteeship with an immediate threat to security of supply as a result of the Russian attack on Ukraine. According to Federal Transport Minister Volker Wissing, the core train network will be completely renovated by the end of the decade with a new concept for the general renovation of important railway lines. In 2030, we will be able to say that we have completely renovated and modernized the most heavily used stretches of the German rail network, said the FDP politician to the German press conference uh, agency in Mainz. Deutsche Bahn board member Michael, uh, Michael Peterson made a similar statement in the German newspaper Zeit. He had predicted an extremely improved situation throughout Germany by 2029. The general refurbishment concept envisages a route being completely closed for a reasonable period of time in order to repair and modernize everything at once. The Riedbahn between Frankfurt and Mannheim, for example, will be the first route to be fundamentally repaired for five months from mid-2024. It is considered the busiest route in Germany. We have a disturbance there every day, said Wissing. The Emmerich Oberhausen route, which is particularly important for freight traffic, and the Hamburg-Berlin route will follow in 2025. And this concludes this week's report on German politics. Of course, you see another one already here on the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.